just give you a little bit of background about Surbiton High School. Um, we are based in Southwest London, Surrey Borders, and we provide um, single sex education across a boys prep school, a girls prep school, a girls senior school and a girls sixth form. We're in a very urban area with a dense population and high proportion of excellent independent schools from the most academic to the most nurturing uh, with a highly selective grammar school thrown in for good measure um, just to keep us all on our toes and we've traditionally been a commuter town for um, central London um, although obviously that pull is, is dwindling these days as people tend to make the move slightly further out than Surbiton to, into the countryside. So on to the uh, pandemic, and it's a, it's a timely week to be talking about this, isn't it? Two years on from when we went into our first lockdown. Um, and hopefully there will come a point at which we do stop talking about uh, the impact of the pandemic, uh, not just globally, but also the impact that it's had on our roles and in, within our schools. Um, but great time to reflect. So. Um, we're still seeing the uh, after effects on schooling, on well-being of pupils, on the well-being of staff as well, on recruitment of pupils and even recruitment and retention um, of those staff. And if we just roll back to March 23rd, 2020, we faced our first day of lockdown thinking uh, it would only be for maybe a few weeks and then we'd all be back in school. Um, obviously quite naive now when we look back two years later and still see that we're in. Um, almost back to normal, but maybe not quite back to normal where we were. Um, at Sebson High School, we're an iPad uh, school working on one-to-one -one devices from year three to year 13, and our lower years use iPads within the school environment as and when appropriate. The embedded, the embedded digital strategy meant that we turned on Teams on the Monday morning and ran a full live timetable for the senior school, live sessions for prep school pupils, small group teams, mentoring, challenges, and who knows what else, trying to commit, trying to ensure that that day-to-day -day life of school continued in the virtual world. So I just wanted to show you a brief insight as to what this looked like at Surbiton High School. Hopefully I can get the video to work. I'll just stop it there, it goes on for eight minutes. So it's a, a fairly lengthy video, um, but it gives you a bit of a flavor of the range of things that we as a school did, which I'm sure many schools did as well. Um, interestingly, the song that the girls were singing, as you saw at the very end there, was being was um, recorded remotely by um, everyone in their own homes and was, was a piece written by our composer and resident at the school, specifically for um, the school, specifically for lockdown as well. Um, it gives you a small flavour of some of the activities that took place, just try and keep everything on track for the girls and for the school, but maybe more relevant to this um, 
actually sorry i've got another slide just to show you um some of the work that we did before we move on um more relevant to this discussion then what did march the 23rd look like in the ensuing two years of impact communications on market impact on the communications marketing and admissions and what are some of the lessons that we can learn from this roller coaster ride like most schools we had an annual marketing budget mapped out um, through all the key stages of the admissions um, journey and uh, we all had one thing in common on March 23rd, as we went into lockdown, all our plans probably looked a little bit more like this photo. Scrunched up plans that went out of the window and in front of us a blank piece of paper, whilst we tried to work out how on earth we were going to reinvent every aspect of that admissions journey. I don't know how you all cope. Uh, we, maybe I, definitely went into overdrive at first, thinking that we had to do everything immediately working long days, long nights, weekends. We tried to invent at speed a virtual replica of everything that we tried and tested for so many years. So what did this look like at Surbiton High School? Well, it was a fairly um, heady combination of, of communications, as I'm sure you can all appreciate. We had to reconsider every audience and how we were going to reach out to them. So for internal audiences, that meant more frequent communication, making sure that it was very regular, it was honest in its approach, especially with the changes that were happening so frequently. Um, that took the form of emails, virtual events, printed um, digital guides and more. For external audiences, we trialled different types of open event formats, trying to work out what worked best for us, for our, our presenters, what worked best for our audiences. We filmed virtual tours with no students at all, that seemed really strange, created suites of new materials, developed virtual experience platforms, virtual taster sessions, and the list goes on. The lack of face-to-face -face contact meant we had to try even harder to connect with existing parents and prospective parents to make up for it. And here's just, this is slide, it's just a few examples of some of the work that we created during that madness. Uh, this continued to play out over the past few years in different guises and to different degrees. Many of these items that you can see on screen at the moment are still in existence and still being used for the core purpose which we created them for. We've got recruitment materials for reception and with senior school as well. We've got support work for all ages, wellbeing materials for pupils and staff. Although the item in the bottom right hand corner kicking Corona's butt definitely wasn't one for pupils that was aimed at staff wellbeing. So moving on to what have we learned over the past two years, I think aside from learning that we can all reinvent our roles and the intense workload that we can bear. One of the biggest things has to be the huge benefit of technology. We've all learned how much we need technology to disseminate our messaging from educating our pupils to marketing our schools. It has all been reliant on technology, virtual tours, open mornings, keeping in touch events, meet the head events, prize giving events, celebrations wouldn't have happened without the use of Zoom, Teams or Google Meet. They all became platforms that were part of our daily working life, the key mode of communicating to external and internal audiences. And who isn't still going to miss those you're on mute moments that we see all the time. Um, and this is not forgetting the role that social media has played in amongst this um, use of technology going forward as well. I think secondly, we've also realized the need to have an enhanced digital strategy that embraces the future. And that doesn't just apply to teaching. We all know we need to have a digital strategy for our marketing efforts and not just in terms of SEO and PPC, but we now need to consider what the future looks like in terms of developing that hybrid approach going forward. What else have we learned? I think we've definitely learned that we need to be prepared for the worst. And I think we probably all feel right now that we've been there, but and hopefully we have, but who knows? I don't know where how well you were all prepared and ready for that first lockdown and ensuing two years of restrictions, limitations, and curtailment of our freedom. We definitely thought it was only going to last a few weeks at the time, I think. We did, however, go into it thinking with a half glass empty approach, preparing for the worst and really hoping for the best. Whatever we thought could be that worst case scenario, I think COVID definitely won, but it did mean that we prepared as we went on that journey. I think the next thing um, 
that we've all really learned during this time is the importance of great customer service. When you can't build face-to-face -face relationships, you have to really consider how else you're going to deliver that, that customer service to parents. Forging even stronger relationships with our different audiences became crucial to our success when there was a parental pressure on schools to deliver a fantastic education remotely and all with the ensuing challenges, whilst parents were also demanding reduced fees. From an admissions perspective, trying to deliver great customer service meant being inventive, even more supportive than we had been previously, to build those relationships and build those connections to the school. Um, I've put up here two um, quotes from parents from, of recent surveys that um, they filled out on post acceptance, one from 2020 and one from 2022. I won't read them out to you, but I do think they just highlight the positive response that we can garner from investment in delivering great customer service. I think it's really nice to see this kind of feedback coming through, and I'm sure that's absolutely not bespoke to Serviton High School. I think that's across the board with all the work and the effort that we've all put in over the time. What else have we learned? I think we've all learned that less than perfect is okay, actually, especially when everything, the world is spinning on a completely different axis and it feels like chaos is in the air. We had to adapt at such speed and reinvent everything that we were doing. And that meant there wasn't the time to reflect and consider that you would normally need. We all had to make a plan. It might not be 100% right, but we had to stick to it. And I just thought this painting by Takashi Murakami in Title Chaos summed up visually how mad the world felt during that time. Something else I think we've always known, but uh, became even more to the forefront during the pandemic has been the power of a strong community. Who knew how well a connected community could feel despite the challenges at the time? Through screens and social channels, we've all done amazing jobs to build our communities, to be stronger in spite of COVID. The Get Active campaign that I've um, got a screen grab from on the screen is just one small example of how we at Surbiton High School connected our community during the first lockdown. This charity initiative ran through social channels in Strava and led the whole school community to circumnavigate the UK via, via foot or, or bike, um, traveling over 22,000 kilometers and most importantly, raising over 5,000 pounds for NHS and other local key charities. And on the final points that I think um, we really need to reflect on is that actually when we put our minds to it, we can all achieve great things. Um, we've worked on unbelievable timescales and pressures. And I just thought this quote by Leonard Bernstein summed it up perfectly. To achieve great things, two things are needed, a plan and not quite enough time. How true that has been. So what are some of the current challenges and opportunities that we face? I think one of the most prominent ones at the moment that I think we're all really um, seeing and struggling with is the economic instability of the time that we are living in. We've leapt from one crisis straight into another with no time for recovery. This has put a lot of pressure on families, even those who can afford independent education. The increase in price of energy, the rise in inflation, the cost of living, putting food on the table, and coupled with job insecurity, which is broadly indiscriminate of industry or level, um, is a really beautiful combination, um, which is ultimately putting many families off committing to private school um, to start with. And especially at the reception entry level, um, I think we're seeing the impact across the board where parents might feel it's better to save that money now for their education at secondary level. And on top of that, boarders are far more reticent about returning or even signing up, even more so, I imagine, with the impact of the situation in Ukraine. On top of this, we also had the declining birth rates, as we've just heard. Um, this graph shows the uh, birth rates from, uh, from the last rise, which was in 2008, and shows its anticipated decline looking into the future. Coupling this decline in birth rate with the economic instability, we start to see each school's pool of prospective parents dwindling before our eyes. And sadly, we've already seen the impact of this over the last two years. With the closure of some schools, Ashdown House Prep, Minster School, Hawleyhurst School, 
education investor cited that they expected potentially 30 schools to close because of COVID. And on top of this, we also have demanding parents. The economic pressures they face, the life pressures of the last few years have led to an increase in this type of parents. And we've made a rod for our own back in terms of our online teaching, that now, because it's so easy, as we've demonstrated, that we should be able to do it for every broken leg, every cold, every parent that fancies going off on holiday slightly earlier than the end of term. Parents want to make sure that they are getting exactly what they expected and more for their money. The challenge is to keep them happy whilst trying to keep staff happy and pupils happy too. And I thought I'd just highlight this difficulty from a recent parent communication survey we conducted last November. On the one hand, we have parents who want to step away from it all. Their daughters are in senior school now. I don't want to be over-involved. I want my daughter to be independent and ready for university. And our daughter's in senior school. She needs to take more responsibility for themselves. If I was to dip in, it would be even more too controlling. But in the same survey, you have parents who want the hand-holding still. More detailed information about what the year group is doing weekly. We'd love to know what my child is doing exactly in school every day, every week. Trying to deal with both of those can be quite a tricky task. But moving on to some of the positives, what are the opportunities that face us now? We've gained so much insight and new knowledge and methods of working over the last two years. There is no going back to pre-March 2020, and that's not a bad thing. It's a fantastic opportunity for us to reflect on what we've done this last two years and to review how much of our marketing and admissions work will remain virtual and how much will go back to normal, whatever that means. There is no doubt that there are some early elements that I think are fairly unanimous across schools which will stay. Virtual parents' evenings are surely a blessing for everyone. No one is left stuck waiting for the chatty parents in front to finish about their, their darling child um, and running hours late into the evening. Live streamed events, again, I think there is no doubt many of these will stay. They work brilliantly for busy parents. They work for remote parents, but how do you balance these against needing to build a relationship face-to-face -face with that same cohort of parents? And duplicating every event runs into a hybrid mode, which is quite a drain on resource. And what about open events? What are your views on, on where you're going to head with these? There's a huge opportunity to increase your reach through running these virtually, but physical events also allow parents to get under the skin of a school more easily. I imagine for most schools and definitely boarding schools, these will become a hybrid mix of offering both. At Surbiton, we've just started running physical events again across the three schools and the appetite is surprisingly strong. Our recent senior school events have had over 200 in attendance with few masks and little inclination to sanitise hands. How far we've moved on now. To the point where at the moment, I don't know whether we would need to have an online event as we're a day school and we, have, we now have a two stage process at Surbiton where parents can go on a virtual journey with us prior to, to coming into the school and attending an event and then can go back onto that virtual journey for further endorsement, understanding and decision making. Another opportunity that I think we've realised um, even more so than perhaps we had previously is the value of social media. We've seen the increase in importance of these platforms and, and how that can play out. And what opportunities are there for us to look at this further? Maybe TikTok is only just around the corner for more of us than we ever imagined, although that does slightly frighten me, I have to say. Um, according to a survey by the American Marketing Association, 84% of marketeers had said that they'd used social media for brand building over the past two years whereas previously it's always been seen as a support, not at the forefront. It's interesting to see that change move so quickly. I think we've also all found a more flexible approach and an ability to pivot according to the market forces, the demand and the changes around us. We've innovated at every corner of our journeys. We've pushed through boundaries that would have taken years before to get to the same point. And the opportunity facing us now is to recognise that we must continue to learn, to adapt and to react in the same way that the commercial world does. Education has always been behind the commercial sector and maybe now it's our time to catch up. According to the Chartered Institute of Marketing, 58% of marketeers 
we're focused on developing new school skills in 2021 and let's hope that that carries on across the independent school sector too. And finally, I think there's been a real awakening within schools, not only how important the role that marketing and admissions play, but who is involved in that process and the external development of reputation and word of mouth. We've had parents who've been able to sample the teaching of a school from their own homes. They've been able to get under the skin of a school from the comfort of their lounge. And that reputationally can potentially be a really, really positive thing. Marketing and admissions is a whole school effort. And maybe we've just reached the point that everyone realizes that. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for that. I think that was um, really, really interesting. And I'm sure there's a lot of food for thought there. And um, I've got a question for you, if that's OK. Of course. Um, so you talked about all the different um, different initiatives you've done and the ones that you kept post COVID and the ones that you didn't. Um, and I just wondered if you could maybe talk us through three, three examples of things that you did because of COVID um, that you're going to keep. Certainly, I think um, I've been working with quite a few schools recently and we've been talking about um, virtual parents evenings. And it seems that every, the sort of universal facts, everyone prefers them, you know, you're not sat there while some woman talks for 20 minutes and you're in the cold sports hall, et cetera, et cetera. And the downside has been, it means that parents aren't going into the school. Um, so we've been working with the idea of, well, what can we offer for the parents so that they are still coming into the school, having that face-to-face -face contact but having the actual parents evening online um, and one school I've been working with, we're looking at a sort of hybrid event where we'll get all the parents in and it will be a sort of 45 minutes talks, chats where everybody can meet all the teachers and um, but then still keep the actual parents evening um, online. But I just thought it'd be interesting for, to hear from you um, what initiatives, you know, that little brochure you had on there about Barney's first day in reception, that that looked wonderful and I can imagine you probably still have kept that but it'd be nice to know which of the things you've learned and which ones you will keep. Yeah I think um, I think we produced a virtual tour um, of the senior school during lockdown that we produced a booklet for as well so as girls went on the tour around the school they had to find um, letters and answer questions in the booklet as they went went around and um, just to make the tour more engaging for pupils and I think that was absolutely brilliant for the time. And we do um, have it a, as a vehicle that we can use to send out to, to um, prospective parents now. But I think the need for that is so much less now because girls, are, girls and their, their parents are coming in on natural tours. So that's something that I think will dwindle going forward. Um, initiatives like the starting school books that you saw, um, those absolutely are staying. We've just sent those out to our incoming 2022 reception children as well and I think they they really help because they're personalized to the buildings as well so we've had um illustrations of each of the boys prep school and the girls prep school um completed so it just really helps that familiarization for um uh, pupils before they start school so those kind of initiatives will definitely stay um we did catch-up work for pupils um starting year seven because we we have a fairly even split between state and prep schools um, and obviously the education really differed during um, the last two years for some of those pupils so we did some um, completely optional um, additional catch-up work for pupils and we also did some um, sort of uh, activity books for want of a better expression I suppose across um, the arts and humanities and the sciences um, during that during the summer of 2020 and I think those the, the need isn't there quite so much now that, that there was before um for that kind of stuff because the world's back to normal kids are off doing their camps and their clubs and all that kind of thing so that that's kind of lessened um the one thing that I think we're still debating at the moment is taster sessions so we originally used to do those in school and the last two years we've done them virtually obviously this year we could have done taster sessions um, in school as well but we opted virtually because actually it's the only window on teaching that parents ever 
ever get to see. They never get to sit in a classroom and see what teaching is like in 2022. And by um, by running the taste sessions online, we sent packs out to the to the families so they could join in a science and art or um, a creative writing session. And as much as it is only the pupils on screen, you absolutely know that the parents are not very far from that camera and they are listening to and they are observing um, the lesson taking place. And I just think from our point of view, I think it's a real confidence in the teaching that's taking place here that we're happy to demonstrate that to parents. I think that's a really, really interesting point because, you know, teachers do not see, um, parents do not see teachers teach, do they? It's, a, it's the old joke that the only teachers you ever see teach are the PE staff because you, yeah. go, and, you go and watch fixtures. So bringing that um, off in an online event like that, I can see that that's got real value in a, in a post-COVID world. So um, I think that's really, really useful. Thank you. And um, we have got another question from Mark. So Mark, if you can just unmute yourself and ask, that would be great. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. And thank you, Sarah. I really found lots of what you said fascinating. So um, your, your humility at the beginning was uh, was very unnecessary because it was it was great. I recognise lots of what you said. Um, I, in particular, the um, I'm involved in various independent schools and state schools, and the bit about um, sort of customer satisfaction and and word of mouth a bit interests me. At all of the schools that I work in, we've seen where we've surveyed, we've either seen satisfaction levels remain the same or even improve slightly, but we've also seen a significant minority be really quite dissatisfied in a way and potentially. Um, start uh, discussing, gossiping, um, even posting anonymously things which are either untrue or unhelpful. And I wonder what experience you or anyone else had in that regard in terms of um, defamation, either from a legalistic point of view or from trying to dissuade people from, um, from defaming the school in different ways. Um, I don't think, I've not had much experience of that here at Sebastian High School. Um, I think, I mean, from a from a marketing perspective, I would always try and um, correct it as much as possible as you can online and take it offline. Would always be my advice that, that get it offline as quickly as you possibly can do. Um, but it's not something that I've experienced um, whilst I've been here at Silverton High School so much. But um, I may go off and have a look at a few uh, mums net forums and just see where we are at the moment um, on, on that point, because I think you can never let, rest on your laurels, can you? I think it's um it's a challenge for every school, especially with WhatsApp now. I think every school has parental WhatsApp groups and, and it's a real big debate. You know, do you as a school stay out of it because you don't want to be answering white wine fueled queries at 10:30 at night? And um, equally, do you want to have an ear so that you can hear what's being said? And I I um, my children go to a school where my husband teaches and I'm in the group as a parent and quite often there will be things being said in there that I know are complete nonsense um, and it's very difficult I think for schools I know that um, I think lots of schools have tried different methods and haven't necessarily got a successful one I don't know if there's anybody on the call who um, might want to or anyone in the room here who might want to uh, share their experience as to how they perhaps got round that sort of parental WhatsApp groups or what, what approaches have taken. I'm aware of one school that is getting parent ambassadors and the parent ambassador in each year will be in the WhatsApp group as a parent, but they will also have a catch up with the head every few weeks to give feedback as to what's been being said in the group so that if something needs to be done from a school perspective, um, they can do it without sort of looking like they were there watching the whatsapp and having to you know react react really because you don't want to become um, reactive because otherwise uh, all marketers and admission staff could find themselves spending all day um replying to replying to queries so i don't know if um i thought that was quite a good idea about the parent group ambassadors i don't know sarah what you've done or if there's anybody on the call who's got done we are um we're just working with our um parents association actually at the moment and we're looking at implementing class list which is um aimed at kind of driving um 
a stop to the to the WhatsApp groups so that there is some oversight. So it works fairly similarly, I suppose, but in a bit more of a formal manner. Everybody signs up to class list um, before they join the school. So it actually helps you start building that community before parents um, join the school. Um, and it's because it's a, a more sort of professional platform, it means that actually the, the, um, the bugbears of parents tend to get get less I think or, or get moaned about I don't know that it would necessarily stop the whatsapp messaging but maybe it stops it to being smaller groups of people as opposed to like a whole class and I know at my son's school his whole year he, oddly his whole year is on a on a whatsapp group so that that negative messaging that can sometimes go out there goes to that whole year nine group which is from a marketeer's perspective that's terrifying <laughs> that somebody who's got a gripe with lunches which they did a while ago started getting their, their daughters to take photos every day um, and put them on the whatsapp group and you just think actually as a school you can't stop that it's very difficult to and, and classless is one option of, of maybe trying to get around that perhaps yeah, thank you. We, we use Classlist actually for exactly that purpose to try and take at least the, the more formal communications into a sort of semi-formal um, yeah. uh, method. It hasn't stopped WhatsApp, so WhatsApp still happens and there are yeah. certain parents who obviously rely on it, but it's um, it's been a useful tool. And what and um, also about, yeah, the, I reckon that ambassador thing was an interesting thing. We've, we've rolled out a... Um, a parent consultation group which is sort of a for, semi-formalized again uh, way of trying to sound out the parents in a slightly more formal way than the friends group is um, whether they could be elected whether whether that would whether it would be a lightning rod for um, for certain forms of, of uh, gripe I hope it has been in some ways but equally there are individuals who who quite frankly are just a little bit mad and have un unrealistic expectations and those individuals are 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 yeah probably getting a disproportionate amount of airtime internally within the schools and um and that that annoys me but um trying to trying to deal with it is an, is another matter the other thing that we've done that's worked really well actually is virtual meet the head which we have continued with and um, we've run those in the format across the three schools where parents submit questions before with a view that we can um, categorize them and kind of make them relevant to to, to um, a topic of conversation so that the, the member of head that's dealing with that so in the senior school if it was the academic vice principal we'd group all those questions together um, and that's how it's kind of been been presented to parents but equally the attendance is better because it's virtual but actually it means that we can reinterpret some of those real negative questions that might be coming through and present them positively um, but we've got the heads up on them um, and we've had really good feedback about that. Um, and it, because you're because you're getting the questions early before the evening, it means that we can actually prepare the answers, um, have a bit more of a considered view on what's being said about things. Um, so that's been a real success, I think, and that is is worth looking at. Thank you. Yeah, interesting idea. Thank you. That that's a particularly interesting idea because I think quite often if you've got parents in the room, um, they might sort of um ask questions that they might not have the confidence to send on an email mm -hmm. so i think that is um quite an interesting an interesting point um, so thank you so much sarah i think we are now going to break for coffee so we'll be back